In this second set of videos uh, about IR0 recap, I'll discuss indexing. So just to remind you, uh, this is the overall pipeline from getting data through uh, processing data to actually preparing for search. And we have just discussed text analysis. And now we will discuss indexing. So we will discuss um, four different topics, the general data structures used uh, for storing data, including an inverted index. Then we will uh, zoom in into the inverted index. We'll talk about uh, constructing and updating an index. And uh, most of this material will be useful for you to do your assignment. Now, uh, as long as we have data, we need to store it in certain formats. Uh, now let's talk about web pages as a very rich source of data. So usually textual documents only have text, but web pages also have links. So discussing um, the data structures for web pages is more general than discussing data structures for textual documents. And usually if we have uh, something like web pages, uh, we have inverted index, which we will discuss in detail. And we will have also a web graph uh, and a page attribute file, which we also may have for other textual documents. So let's see what this all things are about. Now, web graph, uh, if we talk about web pages or some documents that have links between each other, for example, scientific publications, they refer to each other or uh, legal documents or medical documents, they refer to each other it's good to see those um, interconnected documents as a graph where the nodes are the documents and the edges are the links between them. So basically, uh, if we can uh, talk about HTML pages or any document that has links, it should go through an HTML parser, link extractor, and those links go into the web graph. And uh, uh, that web graph can inform different types of algorithms. For example, uh, link spam detection, if we talk about web search, uh, duplicate detection, because um, a few links may lead to the same result for the same document, for example. So this web graph may be used for different types of purposes. So that's uh, how you store links. You store links separately as a web graph. Now, if we talk about the real content, the, the text, let's say, then um, the main source of content for HTML pages is, is from the page itself, of course. But we've just discussed uh, the web graph and uh, links on the web, they have something called anchor text. If you design HTML pages yourself, you may have seen it. Uh, so these are both sources of some text and the text goes through text pre-processing, which we discussed previously. As again, tokenizer, phrase extractor, uh, stopping, stemming, uh, you can add a different other extractors like entity extractor and so on and so forth. And then you store it in a forward index, which means for every document, for every textual document, you store all the um, word information about the document all the words that occur, the frequencies and so on. So forward because it's from the document to the, its content, to its words. And uh, finally, uh, many documents, including web pages, they come with um, metadata, with some attributes. Uh, so that attributes, so those attributes uh, can be uh, used for different types of applications uh, or uh, they actually can themselves be um, descriptors of a page. For example, if you download a web page, you can put it into the spam classifier and, and use that uh, spam index, let's say, um, to put in a page attribute file. So whatever metadata can describe your document, you can put it in a separate page attribute file. So all those structures, web graph, uh, forward index page attribute file, those are different structures used for different types of purposes. So web graph only for links, primarily the page attribute file, here's the example, it's for metadata, well, it's a language of a document, the length of a document. So something that um, describes the document as a whole. 
the number of clicks if we talk about uh, search for example uh, content spam again is the percentage or well, how likely is this to be spam and so on so forth so some metadata so it should be stored separately whenever we talk about a document in general uh, we store it, its metadata separately uh, the main structure will be the inverted index and uh, again that's a separate structure uh, the message of this first part of, of the set of videos is that do not combine uh, information of different types. So store it differently, store links separately, store uh, attributes separately, store the content separately. And content you can store in the forward index, but for search, you will need an inverted index. So an inverted index is not from documents to words, but from words to documents. And uh, you, of course, saw many inverted in indices in the end of textbooks, for example. In the end of textbooks, you have all the list of terms, the list of all terms used in the book and pages where these terms occur. And those are exactly inverted lists and inverted index. And this we are going to discuss in detail in the next video. 